How you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato. You are watching Nature Here and Now. So this video has been rather difficult for me to film and it's taken me quite some time to get the b-roll I want in order to share with you what makes this species so exciting to me. It's a member of the Orthoptera order uh, known as the orange-winged grasshopper. Now Orthoptera has several members. It includes katydids, grasshoppers, and crickets. And Orthoptera pretty much means, like orthos means straight, and terra means wing, like pterodactyl means winged toe, you know? So Orthoptera, well, let me show you. They've got long, straight wings that when they're in a resting position, they hold them closed along their abdomen. And speaking of abdomens, that's another characteristic trait of grasshoppers or Orthoptera. You know, they have a long abdomen, they've got a powerful muscular thorax, and that's where their wings are connected, right? And being insects, they have two pairs of wings. They have a, you know, a front pair or a, a front pair that closes up and is adorned with camouflage. They, they really just disappear in their habitats if they're sitting still or even if they're moving. And of course, their second pair of wings are concealed when at rest, but when they're opened up, they usually have aposomatic coloration, meaning they have bright colors that contrast with dark colors. And in the wildlife world, that usually means that something is either venomous or poisonous, or it tastes pretty nasty. We'll get to that in a couple of minutes. The final characteristic, or not the final, but another characteristic about grasshoppers and crickets and katydids is the fact that they have a large head and being herbivores, most species, they've got very powerful mouth parts used for just wrecking havoc on the vegetation that they eat. In fact, many of the times, you know, say a, a farmer or gardener sees a grasshopper and it fills their heart with fear because grasshoppers can, can be very detrimental to the, the health and economic value of crops. Say you've got a grasshopper swarm coming into your cropland, they could just completely decimate that crop within a matter of hours. So, you know, I can understand farmers or gardeners getting upset when they see them, but when I see a grasshopper, my heart is filled with intrigue and excitement because they're just really incredible species and they're one of the most popular or easily recognized, you know, animals in the insect kingdom. Now, of course, the, the final trademark characteristic of any of the Orthoptera is those massive rear legs. Those things are, are just huge and they're jam-packed with powerful muscles used to just trigger that leg and propel them, you know, a distance away. They're very strong jumping legs and Usually the leg is at least the same length as the body, where the, the front two pairs of legs are usually less than half the length of the body. But of course, like I said, those rear legs are just the main representative of the grasshopper, you know, members. If you've ever held a grasshopper in your hand and you felt those legs triggering off while you're holding on to them, I mean, it feels like you're being flicked by something, you know? It's very powerful. And Grasshoppers don't undergo a metamorphosis like many other insects do. Their young or larval forms look pretty much the same as the adults except for their wings, which are undeveloped and are basically referred to as wing buds. Obviously, the orange-winged grasshopper is the star of this video, and they're, they're a member of the band-winged grasshoppers, and that generally describes the, the black bands on their front pair of wings. However, their rear pair usually has a black band or margin along the rear portion of the, the rear wings in con conjunction with a bright contrasting color. In this case, it's orange. So the second pair of wings, when revealed, has this bright orange with a black margin. And if you're a predator, that's going to really throw you off. Have you ever been taken a quiet, peaceful walk after dark along a back road or a path in the woods just to come up on a dove or whippoorwill that jumps up in front of you and sends your heart through the roof and you're holding your chest about to have a heart attack. That's what these grasshoppers do. That is their 
probably their second form of defense, those powerful hind legs used to propel them forward before they open up those two pairs of wings and fly away a couple of dozen yards to, to live another day, leaving the predator just stunned and probably a little surprised at what just happened before them. This is not the biggest orthoptera in my region, but it's definitely my favorite. All grasshoppers have several defense mechanisms at their disposal. Of course, the, the first and primary form of defense is their camouflage. As long as they're sitting still or not moving very much, you're not going to see them, even if you're right up on them. Um, these, these orange wings are no exception. If you look closely, you'll see these beautiful patches of gray and green and black, and it looks a whole lot like the the old form of camouflage fatigues the soldiers used to wear in like the 80s and uh, the 70s. And I don't see why people don't call them the army grasshopper because that's what they look like. In fact, they would go really well with the, the sycamore trees, the way they shed their patches of bark. I used to call them army trees. In fact, I still do. So this grasshopper on a sycamore tree is going to look very military. <laughs> But that's not their only form of defense. Of course, anything with a mouth can bite. And being herbivores, like I said, they have very powerful chewing jaws that, that are pretty strong. Now, not as strong as the conehead katydids. Believe it or not, those coneheads aren't very big, but the most powerful bite I got from a orthoptera was from one of the cone noses or cone heads, and it was very powerful. It left a mark for several hours, and it, it kind of hurt. Uh, these grasshoppers will bite if, if handled, but you know it depends on the species. Sometimes it's not very powerful, but that leads me to their next form of defense. If grabbed or handled, you might notice this brown tobacco-y liquid coming out of their mouths. Well, that's basically like a bile, and it tastes really bitter. It looks a lot like iodine, you know, or nicotine. And I imagine if you're a predator, it tastes pretty horrific. It's probably really, really bitter and disgusting. Well, I know it's bitter and it's rather disgusting tasting. So if you're a fox or something and you get one of these in your mouth and it spits out all that, that bile, it's going to taste pretty nasty. You're going to open up your mouth and the grasshopper is going to jump out and probably live to fight another day. I'm sure you're waiting for me to mention the obvious defense mechanism and that is their powerful rear legs that they use to jump and flee danger. And you don't really have to say much more than that. You come up on one of these, they kick those powerful legs and they're gonna just go a dozen or two yards away and you're probably not gonna find them again or get distracted by some other food source. But I saved the best for last. If you're lucky enough to catch a glimpse of the inner femurs, you're going to be treated with this incredible lapis blue. And when you see that combined with the, the bright orange of the, the rear wings, it's just a striking display of apple somatic coloration. And it's probably my favorite thing of these grasshoppers. It's so pretty. As mentioned earlier, like most grasshoppers, the orange wings prefer the xeric habitats. Those are pretty much open, weedy, grassy fields filled with plenty of food, cover, and sunlight. These are usually diurnal species, but I've seen plenty of them feeding at night well after the sun has set. The antenna on these species are a little bit on the shorter side. You know, some species of grasshopper have antenna that are much longer than their bodies. And then you've got these tiny little nubs for antenna, and then this species here is kind of in the middle. And no illustration of grasshoppers is complete without those massive compound eyes. They're really good at detecting color and light and dark. It lets them know if there's a predator, you know, coming up from ground level like a lizard or a snake or some kind of mammal. And of course they easily notice any shadow approaching from above and that would obviously be some kind of carnivorous bird. Aside from birds, if there was one other creature that would be the, the grasshopper's nemesis, I would have to say that would be the Argaipi spiders, or those large garden spiders that you see. They've got very strong webs with that zigzag pattern in the middle, you know, that concentrated uh, stable momentum. And some theories point that that might actually reflect ultraviolet light 
you know, to attract some of the prey or resemble a stem of a plant or blade of grass in order to lure in the grasshoppers thinking that they've got some food or something to land on. Those Argaipi spiders probably get so large because their, their favorite food are grasshoppers. And if you know grasshoppers, they could get pretty big. Just take a minute to appreciate these extraordinary animals. In my opinion, they're just a magnificently beautiful package of finely tuned wildlife. I've got a funny story for you. Years ago when I was really young, I was walking around in the yard with my mom and she pointed down at uh, you know, a patch of tulips and she told me, that's where grasshoppers are. And well, needless to say, for the next several years, I, I greatly misunderstood what she meant. I thought she meant that tulips were basically grasshopper factories. So for several years, I'd be walking along and if I, if I spotted a patch of tulips, I would, I would look around and I'd reach down and I'd pluck one of the leaves and then I would slice it open with my thumbnail and to my great disappointment, there wouldn't be anything inside. I was expecting to see like a, a young grasshopper being manufactured. That never happened, but I was persistent. You know, I was like, okay, better luck next time. One day I'll find a grasshopper within one of those leaves. Never happened. Most grasshoppers, crickets, and katydids have rather pronounced and impressive thoraxes. That often houses the, the muscles for the wings, and for many of the species, the wings are where they make their song, especially with the katydids. There's kind of like a fork and notch apparatus at the base of the wings, and when they rub them back and forth, it makes that long, you know, clicky sound that is characteristic of katydids and warm summer nights. Speaking of katydids, my mom always says that they look like the, the modern newfangled version of grasshoppers and I can't say I disagree. I mean, they definitely look a lot more elegant and sleek and refined. So, mom, if you're watching, how you doing? And uh, I totally agree with you. Like for mom. Hit the like button for my mom. Make her smile. Anyways, back to the video. We obviously know that these are herbivores, but anytime I've tried to research the the favorite food or primary food of the orange winged grasshoppers, I come up with nothing. You know, I've seen them on grass numerous times, but never once have I actually ever witnessed them feeding on anything. So if you happen to know what the species likes to eat, let me know in the comments below. And I'm hoping Spencer, you probably know. And speaking of Spencer, he hosts an amazing wildlife channel called My Wild Backyard. And if you're not already a subscriber to his channel, definitely check it out. He gives me a run for my money and it's intimidating. <laughs> That's off to you, Spencer. So there you have the orange winged grasshoppers. Of course, they're band wings and they're members of the Orthoptera. And like I said, it's my favorite species. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I probably have Lyme disease by now. I'm not joking actually. So if you watch it this far, please hit like and subscribe. Um, it really helps me out and I'm probably gonna need, probably gonna need it for the doctor bills. <laughs> I'm Chris Ignato, thanks for watching, signing out. This species here is the, now this species is the star of my, now this species here, the orange winged grasshopper, is the star of this video. And things like that happen. And ticks. I swear, this year is the worst year in my life that I've ever had for ticks. New Jersey's just crawling with them. Almost as bad as Egg Harbor. Ugh.